All right, so the equilibrium constant is dependent on temperature. So it changes whether it's temperature's higher or lower and stuff like that. Uh, and remember that it gives us some information in terms of uh, it indicates where the equilibrium lies, right? What do I mean by that? Michael. Of the products or reactions. Right. Okay. So if K is greater than one, right, products are favored at equilibrium. All right. If K is less than one, then you got reactants are favored, right? All right. Okay. So you guys wrote equilibrium expressions yesterday. We should be pretty decent at that now and know how to do that, right? Okay. So Today, what we'll do is we're going to use those equilibrium expressions, but we're just going to run some calculations with them to figure out, okay, well, where, do the, where does the equilibrium mean lie for these different reactions, okay? So I'm just going to, let's do some calculating. Um, here's one scenario. We're going to calculate, this is the easiest one, calculate our equilibrium constant uh, given molarities, okay, given molarities of different things in our reaction. So I'm just going to give them to you. I'm not going to like spell out a big old long reaction here or anything like that or like long word problem, right? I'm just going to put in here like, all right, well, uh, let's just use sulfur trioxide gas and it's going to decompose into two sulfur dioxides and one oxygen gas. Okay, and I'm just going to give you the concentrations of these, and we'll plug them in and get a value here. So, concentration of SO3 for this one is 5 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Concentration of SO2 is going to be 3 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. I'm just kind of making these up. Okay, concentration of O2 is going to be 3.5 times 10 to the minus 3 molar at equilibrium. <clears throat> right, so if this is a, if this is the case, all right. Well, I guess before I continue on here, uh, what is my Brian Berkmeyer? Can you write out our equilibrium expression here? What tell me what to write for our equilibrium? Just the expression. Don't put any numbers in it. Just the expression. Just on, top. on top, okay. There we go, great. Okay, so that's our expression. The, these are the equilibrium concentrations. So let's plug them into our expression and see what our K is at equilibrium. Okay, so we've got. 3 times 10 to the minus 3 squared times 3.5 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 5 times 10 to the minus 3 squared. And what does that equal? Well, so if you don't have your calculator out yet and stuff like that, let's break it out. We're going to need it. Got a couple more donuts left back there. Anybody's feeling feeling the urge for another one? Okay, so what'd you guys come up with here for our K value? 
zero point zero one. That's not what I got. Uh huh. I didn't get zero zero one two six. I got one point two six times ten to the minus five. Three. Hang on. Let me double check my math there. That's you get what I got? No. Maybe I, oh, maybe it is the third. Okay, sorry. So, yeah, so 3 second E negative 3 squared times 3.5. My answer is six point three times kind of a negative three. That's it. That's it right there. That's it. Period. End of story. Okay. All right. Great. Um. So kind of similar along those same lines. Sometimes they might, well, actually, I'll wait on that, that next example. The next one we'll do is we'll do like, all right, let's say you're given a mixture of concentrations, right, and moles. So, for example, like maybe they give you, uh, so at equilibrium, The uh, H2 and I2 are at a uh, point zero or six point uh, six point two nine times ten to the minus four molar, and there are. 9.3 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of HI in a, in a 2 liter container. Find KEQ. So here's our equation. Yes. Wait, what does it say? I2 are at. Are at. Uh, oh, it's just. It says A, but it's probably. We can just <laughs> scratch that out. Are at 6.29 times 10 to the minus 4 molar, and there are 9.3 times 7 minus 3 moles of HI in a 2 liter container. Okay? We want to find the equilibrium constant. Now, the, the, the deal is equilibrium constants, you might have noticed, I didn't put a unit on that last number. Okay, these are just pretty much kind of the only time you're able to get away with not putting units on your number. All right, so no units on Ks, but the key is though when we do calculate equilibrium constants, we all the units have to match. Like if we're going to use pressures, which you can use, all the numbers you plug in have to be pressure. If we're going to use concentration, like molarity, all the numbers that we put into the expression better be molarity. Okay, if we're using uh, moles, we can actually use moles too. In some cases, we just have to make sure all of the values that we plug into the equilibrium expression are moles. They often the units have to match with everything going in. Okay, so what we're going to do here, since they're telling us that concentration of H two is equal to the concentration of I2, and that is all at 6.29 times 10 to the minus 4 molar, okay? I'm just going to convert moles of HI into molarity. How do I do that? 
how do I find the concentration of HF? How am I going to do that? Yeah, Jack. There we go. Take our moles and we divide it by the two liters, and now we get concentration. Right? Moles per liter. Moles per liter is concentration. Right? So let's do that. By two, so we got four point six five times ten to the minus three molar. Right. Doesn't matter if you wrote point zero zero four six five, that's fine too. Same thing. And then we plug it in. We got to plug it into our expression. So K is equal to right, concentration of HI squared over concentration of H2 E2. All right, so we just plug in the values. So HI is going to be 0.465 times 10 to the minus 3 squared over minus 4. 0.29 times 10 to minus 4. Is that what you guys got? 54.7? All right, that's good. Got some hub shaking. Um, and they're shaking in the right direction. The At this point, it, with this reaction, it's at equilibrium. What's favored at equilibrium here? What's favored at equilibrium? products are right what's up oh great thank you I appreciate that right products are favored right products are favored because K is greater than one K is greater than one right there's more products than there are reactants Questions about that? Yes. You know what happened there? When you plugged it in, did you have parentheses around this number and then have parentheses around that number separately? Yeah. You know what your calculator did right there? It took this squared it divided by that number and then multiplied it by that number because it's following the order of operations. Yeah. yeah, so you could square it, or if you wanted to, you go 6.29 times 10 to the minus 4 times 6.29 times 10 to the minus 4 in one parenthesis. Or you could do it like this. Watch this. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this way I do this stuff. So I'll go 4.65 times 10 to the minus 3. I'm going to get that in my calculator. So I'm just going to hit enter. I want that guy squared, right? Enter. Okay. So I got that number. That's my that's my numerator. Okay. Then I'm going to take 6.29 times 10 to the minus 4. Square that guy. There we go. So I'm going to go 2.16 second E minus 5. Divided by 3.956, second E, negative 7. There we go. I don't put all the parentheses in. You know why? 
because your calculator is going to, unfortunately, it's dumb, and it's going to do exactly what you tell it to do. And if you make an error putting the parentheses in, then it spits out a number still. You know what I mean? So you got to be conscious of how your calculator views this calculation. Like when you have that, uh, and you square that or whatever, right? Four, or it's 4.65 times 10 to the minus 3. You square that number. Then you did this, and you go parentheses, 6.29, second E minus 4, close parentheses, parentheses again. Your calculator sees that as it's going to take that number and divide it by that, and then multiply it by whatever I put in that, whatever I put in the next parentheses. It's just doing the order of operations. But if you happen to put parentheses there and second insert put parentheses there, because what that does is I put all of that underneath. That means your calculator is going to read that as all of that being in the denominator, and I get 54.7. You know what I mean? So that's the part you got to be careful with what you're doing in your calculator. So the above the delete button, it should be a little INS. So you do second. So delete makes it go away. Insert, you can put it in. <laughs> Wish you could have come to me earlier. <laughs> All right. There you go. No. Oh, you can't. Yeah, I know. I can't. All right. Uh, so there's that. Now, so that's two. Let's do, all right, there's, you want me to do one where we find KAQ, where they have grams for any, everything? You just convert into moles, divide by the volume, and then plug it in. I'll do I'll do one real quick. I got one here. I'm just going to use the same formula or the same uh, equation I've been using just to make it simple. I'm going to say I got this in a 4.50 liter container, right? All right, the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to write down the, I got two, on, 2.02 grams of H2. I'm going to say I've got 45.45 grams of I2, and I've got 25 grams of HI. Bless you. Just let it out, man. It's going to, like, blow an eardrum or something doing that. Okay. okay. All right, so when I set this up here, first, if I got grams, we got to convert into moles, right, and then divide by volume to get into molarity, right? We want molarity. So I'm just going to do my mole conversion here for all these. I'm going to kind of do them vertically. So in one mole of H2, there are 2.02 grams, so I have one mole here. So in one mole of I2, I didn't pick some very nice ones here. Uh, I think this is 253.9. Yes, but that's going to be 0.8. Okay, uh, equals, I don't know. And then one mole of HI. That's going to be 126.107. So that's going to be 127.0 grams, I think. 26.9. Oh, 128. Thank you. 28. There we go. Because we'll put a 1 plus, you know. Yeah. Got it. What? 253.8. Okay. 
theory that it looks like a zero. A little bump on top of the zero. It makes it eight. All right, so how many moles of I2 do I have? Seven, thank you. Like how you get in here, Kelly and Thomas, and you just start going to town. Okay, uh, what about the next one? 0.195. That one looks like an inverse. It's like a blob to me. Well, there's no number that's for the blob, so. Really, Brendan? Really. Hey, hey. <laughs> no need to be me. You just cross the line. The line was there, and then you were, you crossed it. <laughs> All right. So when we do these here, right, we get our concentrations. So one divided by four point five. Point two 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 molar. Point one seven seven divided by four point five. Point zero three nine three, and the last one point nine five divided by four. Point zero four three three. So that when you deploy, when you plug them into the K, right? We got point zero four three three squared over point two 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 times point zero three nine three. All right, let's see what you guys got. I got 0.215. Yay. I just kind of worked down. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a little hard to see on the screen. All right. Okay, one last scenario, and then I'll let you guys do your thing. We won't get to Q today. We'll get to Q tomorrow, Monday, unless you want to come in. Yeah, well, actually, you'll have to come to Fries of West because I'll be there all day. It's going to be there forever. You should. You should come out for track. Unfortunately, you do volleyball. You're done playing volleyball? No, I am playing more. That's why I'm if something, if something doesn't work out with volleyball, you come out for track and we'll push you to work. No, man, you, you know, high jump you or long jump you or make you a hurdler or something. All right. Okay, number the final thing here, they might ask you to find uh, concentration of, of something. <laughs> When given a KEQ, right? So you just kind of, yeah, you just plug and go. So, so like, for example, if you have CL5, these are actually probably the easiest. PCL3 plus, these are all gases. It's just all gases. I'm, I'll put the gas in there, a little symbol. All right, so let's say that uh, the KEQ for this is equal to 0 0.030. Let's say uh, the concentration of PCL5 is equal to 0 0.058, and the concentration of PCL3 is equal to 0 0.042, and we don't know what the concentration of the CL of the chlorine gas is. Right, this would be the other, only other thing to do here. So then when we set this up and we got our KEQ, it's equal to 0 0.030, which is also equal to the expression, right? So we got PCL3 times concentration of chlorine, all divided by the concentration of Cl5. So you just plug it in. Plug in what you know. We don't know the concentration of chlorine, but we know everything else. Right, so we set it up. 
and then you just have to solve for the chlorine gas. Did you guys get point zero four two? Well, point point zero zero. Yeah, four one. Yeah, okay. I think I just kind of rounded earlier there or something. Point zero one four. All right, I'll 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 go to that. Point four four one four. That work. What's that? Oh, you know, you'll be fine. <laughs> We're good, right? All right, so that's it for today. We'll do Q on Monday.